रईस वर्सेस काबिल शाहरुख खान वर्सेस ऋतिक सनी लियोनी वर्सेस उर्वशी रौतेला इन ऑल ऑफ दीज क्लैशेज देर इज अ मोर पॉपुलर अ मोर फेमस एंड अ मोर लाइकेबल वन टू चूज फ्रॉम नाउ दिस इज नॉट अ मूवी रिव्यू इट इज स्टिल अ टेक चैनल बट वॉट डू आई डू आई एम अ फिल्मी काइंड ऑफ अ टेकी बट द पॉइंट ऑफ ट्राइंग टू मेक इज बिलो थर्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज द मोस्ट लॉजिकल स्मार्टफोन यू कैन बाय इज द वन प्लस थ्री टी एंड राइटली सो गिवन द अमाउंट ऑफ स्पेसिफिकेशन इट गिव्स यू एट दैट प्राइस पॉइंट However, the phone I'm holding in my hand might just be a viable alternative to the OnePlus, and for some people, it might just be the better one. It is called the Nubia Z11. I am called Sid, and this is its full review. I'll be telling you here uh, how good the phone is for you, how the phone performs in real life, and whether or not you should be buying it over the OnePlus 3T. And before you disregard it as being another Chinese phone, read this comment I found on our channel. Now, if you don't know this already, we at Ninety One Mobiles are conducting our annual Ninety One Mobile Smartphone Awards, where you get to pick for your favorite smartphone and make it the phone of the year 2016. All you need to do is go on the link below and vote for it, and you might also get a chance to win a lot of cool goodies. So, vote and win. Now, the reason I'm pitting this phone against the One Plus 3T is because both these phones have similar pricing and similar specifications. However, The phone, in fact, has identical specs to the One Plus 3, not the One Plus 3T. Having said that, however, let's start the review. And the place where this phone really shines and scores full points is its designing. It steals the show there. It uses standard materials like glass and metal, but the execution is excellent. Uh, it is, in my opinion, as good looking as the Batman edition of Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. And part of the reason for these good looks are its back. It's very premium. and look at the attention of detail here you get a colored uh, rim around the camera lens and this probably is the only smartphone where the antenna bands on the back look rather elegant how you said that however the phone also has a fingerprint scanner on the back uh, which is very fast uh, it's not as fast as the OnePlus 3T but gets the job done and it's very useful as well uh, it can take uh, selfies for you you can unlock screens you can unlock apps with it and it can also click screenshots a feature that you should turn off because it's very annoying As a side note as a joke however this phone it, in my opinion seems to be obsessed by taking screenshots and in the course of this video I'll be addressing that point too So what we've established till now is that the designing of the smartphone is excellent but the display of the smartphone is beyond excellent In terms of specifications the screen size and the resolution are rather standard you get a 5.5 inch screen with full HD display that has deep blacks good colors and gets even brighter than the OnePlus 3's optic AMOLED panel but again the execution is solid the phone has a 2.5D curved display which unlike Samsung's rather cosmetic edition has a very purposeful implementation it gives rise to a lot of cool shortcuts which once you get used to are pretty useful double tap the edge and you go back swipe along it to flip to the last tab and when you get two fingers on both the edges Swipe along and it adjusts the brightness for you. And you might say that these inclusions are gimmicky, but in my opinion it make it a rather cool device. Look at how the notifications and background apps get cleared. It's so cool. And that's why I like it. By the way, another thing you can do with the screen is if you take three fingers and swipe them down on the screen, you can take a screenshot. But that is more of a software feature. So let's discuss software now. The phone packs an Android Marshmallow with Nubia's Nubia UI which means there are certain things an Android familiarist like me won't like maybe the lack of an app drawer or the absence of a search bar in the settings but there is a lot to like in this skin there is a swipe split up that supports more dual screen apps than Samsung's TouchWiz and makes you miss Android Nougat a bit less and there's also the dual instances with which you can run two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone Then there are many other features that again make this a cooler device like palm swipe screen lock, three finger app switches and my favorite shake to clear. But that doesn't mean that the device is flawless. Now, I really like this home button which apart from adding the character to the phone also glows up to give you notification alerts and charging alerts. However, what I don't like is the uselessness of other buttons. So there are three buttons here. There's a back button and an option button which can be swapped depending on your preference. And if you hold back it acts as a multitasking key for you to switch between windows. But the thing is a menu button is not used in many instances barring uh, the home screen or the camera. You're not likely to use it that often. 
So what I would have instead liked was a separate multitasking key, which on pressing could have acted as a menu button. Uh, now that is not a big con, but it's just some personal preference I have. However, to lighten things up, when you pull the notification shade down, there is a super snap icon. And when you press it, you can take screenshots. On a serious note, however, let's discuss performance of this device. The performance of this device is top notch. You get a Snapdragon 820 CPU with 6 GB of RAM. And apart from OnePlus, this is the only flagship killer to offer 6 GB of RAM in India at that price. And with the exception of an Asus Zenfone 3D Lux, it is the only smartphone in India to get, get you that huge amount of RAM. And as a result, performance is uh, flawless. So there are no hiccups in opening apps or running programs. In fact, games in particular look better due to this edge-to-edge -edge display, even though the speakers get covered while playing them. And now let's talk about the cameras. It has similar configuration as the OnePlus 3T, which means by default, it is gonna be good. Due to boosted colors, the day shot in fact look more vibrant than a OnePlus 3T, which sticks to a more natural looking tone. In Windows 2, the cameras are good and HDR2 is efficient. Yet, in low light, the shutter speeds get a bit low, though the quality is still decent for a flagship killer. And I would also like to mention that the autofocusing of this camera is pretty impressive. Turning to the front camera, selfies look great, yet seem fake. They are too beautified even when the beauty mode is at zero. However, the selfies in low light look way better than the OnePlus due to the addition of a screen flash, which OnePlus 3T lacks. And as far as the question goes, which camera is better, this or OnePlus 3T? The samples are now up on your screen. Do let me know in the comment box below which camera you find better. And now let's talk some battery. Well, the user interface does not allow one to see the screen on times on this phone. So that won't be comparable. However, in terms of capacity, it is similar to OnePlus 3 with a 3000mAh cell. And the battery life is also very similar, which is not something you would call good. Uh, however, you can make this battery more acceptable by turning on the low power mode. And you have a quick charging 3.0 on board as well, which means that the phone is very fast to recharge. But in retrospect, the battery life to me was a bit disappointing. And that brings us to the end of my analysis of this review. And it's now time for me to give you my verdict on this phone. Remember I told you back then that you can take screenshots by swiping three fingers down on the display? Well, guess what? You can also click screenshots by swiping three fingers upwards. So, how's the phone? Well, it's an amazing phone with an awesome design. One of the best ones I've seen till now. Moreover, it has some cool gestures, features, and things like an IR blaster, which not many other devices out there have. Uh, there is no major flaw that I can point out in this device. The only one I thought of when I earlier was reviewing this device was that you might face some issues uh, in getting uh, in availing warranty on this device because it's a new brand. However, this is what something wrote in the comment section, which debunks that myth too. But the question is, would I be recommending people to buy a Nubia Z11 over a OnePlus 3T? Well, the answer is no. For the simple reason that I do not know when or whether will a Nubia device be getting updated to the next version of Android. And the version after that, what happens then? Moreover, if you are into routing, custom rooms, uh, or if you like to uh, look up for support online, OnePlus 3T has a bigger user base and a lot of support available online. Nubia might not have the same. And this is where pricing comes into the play. When the ticket's price are same, I pick Rais over Kabil. Got the answer? Having said that, this phone is for someone who likes to flaunt. It's got flauntable features, it's got flauntable specs, and it's got a design that will make anyone swoon. But having said that, this phone is for someone who loves to flaunt. You can flaunt its features, you can flaunt its gestures, you can flaunt its specs. And more importantly, it's got a design that if you take along, you would never ever need another conversation starter in a party. And that brings us to the end of my full review of the Nubia Z11. Do let me know in the comment box below what you think of this device and what you think of this review, honestly. Also, do not forget to hit the subscribe button on our channel. Uh, do give this video a thumbs up, do share it with your friends and do vote for the 91 Mobiles Phone of the Year awards as well. My name is Sid, come back to see more of me. Ciao.